Hello, Eamon here from uh, Millwall. No one likes us talking broadcasting. And what we've got for you now is a Mill Community Trust special, which features Kelly Webster and the Lions Food Hub, Libby Stubbs, the captain of Millwall Lionesses, and the Millwall Romans. Three of those on the show this evening. But before we do that, let's hear from our Bethany Warren. Hi, Bethany Warren here. Millwall fans Danielle and James will be running the London Landmark Half Marathon in August in memory of Danielle's cousin, Jordan Dawes. Listen to Danielle tell her story. Hello, so I am running the London Landmark Half Marathon in August. While training for Tough Mudder, which I'm doing in September, I feel I got the bug for running. I wanted to give myself a challenge and while raising money for Eleanor. Jordan's memory lives on forever and as a family, we honour her memory by giving back to the charities that gave their care and support during the darkest of times. Jordan lost her battle to cancer in 2019. She was a keen footballer playing for the likes of Charlton Athletic, Dillingham and ending her football career at Kent Football United. One of the most memorable times for me and the family when watching Jordan play was when she actually saved a penalty in a cup final leading Kent Football United to win. She was an infectious person to be around. Her smile lit up the room. She was keen in talking to James about Millwall. She would come with us as of when she can. And the last game that she actually went to was the FA Cup game against Everton, where Millwall actually spoilt her, made her feel really special. She was able to meet some of the players, have her pictures taken with the keeper at the time, and was actually given the treatment of being able to go into the exec lounge as well. What a story and what a lovely couple Danielle and James are in doing this together. So if you can help, you can just put James and Danielle fundraising for Eleanor, that is E-L-L-E-N-O-R, into your browser and the Just Giving page will be shown. I'll say that again. Just put James and Danielle fundraising for Eleanor, that is E-L-L-E-N-O-R, into your browser and the Just Giving page will be shown. Thank you. A link will also be in our announcements on Facebook and Twitter. Well, thanks, Bethany. And uh, if you can uh, help set up the memorial in aid of one of our own, Jordan Dawes, at Eleanor, please help if you can. Right, we're going to go over to young Harvey Brown, who's going to introduce the next section on the show. Have you heard of the Lions Food Hub? It is now located in the Mill Community Trust car park. That's beside Mill's Den in Bellina Road. That Mill lioness, Kelly Webster, is involved and you can hear her talk with Debbie Julians about it. Debbie's dad was a Mill goal scoring legend from years gone by. Okay. Don't Lovely to, to meet you in Lovely. person, Kelly, and everybody here. I must say I'm honoured uh, to be amongst here with all these dedicated people, uh, Millwall family, as somebody said before. So, what an occasion here beside the den in your new Lions Food Hub home. Tell us how the Food Hub came to be here. So, thank you anyway for yeah coming down, all of you. It's really nice to see you, finally meet you. Um, so, originally we was in a tenant association hall up the road in, we started in January. They were doing sort of like a little bit of a food network then. Um, and then we came on board to basically sort of help make it bigger. So then when restrictions started being lifted, we knew we needed a new home and Sean Daly basically let us come into here, said I've got a space for you out in the car park if you want it. So we decided that we need to try and get funding to, first of all we thought it was going to be a shed, because that's all we could really afford, but it ended up being a container luckily that we had funding come through through Food Education Trust, so yeah. So it's absolutely amazing. I am so impressed. It's, it looks so smart and it, how you actually got this done in the last couple of days. Wow. <laughs> so how did the Lions Food, Food Hub originally come about? So as I said, yeah, it was through, we started helping out the Manor, like Renia Estate Tenants Association. They had a food <laughs> network and we came on board from that. 
Um, and then I wanted I wanted to do care packages in the first sort of like lockdown, and it never came about because I couldn't get funding from this, that, the other. So I spoke to Lisa Dalton from Manor uh, Rennie Tenant Association, and they said they were happy for us to come on board and help from there. And then it just grew from there. We um, got a bit of help from Mill Supporters Club and that kind of thing, and the media from the Lionesses, all of those sort of helped us and came up with an idea of uh, this Banquet app. So you go onto Banquet, um, you donate to Lions Food Hub, and then we order stock through Morrison's Wholesaler, and it gets delivered to us like on a lorry. So. I'd say that's probably about how it, yeah, it's a bit of a mad one to how it started. That's brilliant. I mean, that really is. So that the, that chain is is excellent way of doing things. So yeah. Um, so who has supported this initiative? So first and foremost, I have to thank Sean Daly because Sean Daly has been there for me for from day dot. It literally like when we started off, he's given me shirts to auction. He, he's given me advice, he's always been there. Um, if, if he's had food left over from any of his programs, then he's offered it to us. He's just literally, and now obviously, given us this amazing space that I don't even we can just say it's like the Lions Food Hub, it's going to be like a, a massive community hub in my eyes. People can come down and have a cup of tea, have a coffee. If they want to bring donations down, we'd love to meet them and they could like have a chat with us and stuff like that. So, first and foremost, Sean Daly, and then Secondly, I'd have to go with Food Education Trust when they gave us the funding to be able to afford the container because, as I said, we thought that we were going to end up with just a shed. And as you can see, it's, it is a, it's an amazing, amazing container. It absolutely suits purpose. It's going to keep us warm in the winter and it's going to keep people fed all year round. So definitely those two are the, the big ones. But for me, as, as Margaret Mizen said when we opened, it, the Mill family. Every single one of them that have helped, have donated, have shared posts, retweeted, they've all played a part in this because without them we wouldn't be where we are today for me. Definitely, definitely. It is, it is amazing here. I mean, you've got tables and chairs outside as well. I dare say in the winter there'll be plenty of soup as well. So, <laughs> excellent. Um, you are now getting additional support from the Food Educational Trust. How else might our listeners help support the needs of the community through donations and food or funds? So, as I said before, like the Banquet app, so if they go on to, if they search on their Google, uh, like Banquet Lions Food Hub, you can go on there, you can either do a one-off donation or you can do monthly donations. The monthly donations helps us see how much we're going to have each month, so they're a bit easier for us to work out. But don't get me wrong, if someone wants to put in a one-off donation, that, that for me is perfect as well. So that kind of thing, you can do that. And then we're hoping that on match days, it's pretty, I think Sean's going to allow it, but we're going to open for donations to come down on match days. So you can pop by on a match day, give us your donation. And we're also setting up um, a donation wall. So the wall's just where Sean is now. We're going to have anyone that supported us anyone that's donated, anything like that, they can come down and I'm going to put everyone's name on that has basically donated anything and all that kind of thing. You can have your picture done at the wall, obviously, and that's where we're going to go from there. And I think it'd be a great feature for us. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. So better get down here and donate and also <laughs> get by the wall. Um, yeah, so, um, also, um, I was going to say about local chefs and hotels and things like that, they could actually... Do a, play their part and donate as well, couldn't they? Yeah, definitely. Will you be able to support healthy eating? We try as much as possible for healthy eating. I'm not like, I mean, a lot of food banks, it is just long life stuff, but we really try and push for that we do fresh stuff. So we do the eggs, we do milk, we do mince, and we do sausages. Mince was always a massive thing that I've always wanted to do for the sheer fact that mince you can make, lasagna you can make, shepherd's pie, chili con carne. There's so many different things that you can do with mince, and I think there's so many healthy options that you can do with it. So we will try and do up um, like ingredient cards and stuff like that, different recipes so we can help them with what they can use certain stuff for. But yeah, I do want to promote healthy eating as much as possible. I don't think I would ever want to just give something as a quick fix because 
if you're making a meal for your family, I think it still gives you something in your own mental health and stuff like that. It, you're feeling like you're providing. You might have come here to that you needed help with the food, but you're actually going home and making that meal yourself. So I think the, the chain goes sort of through like that. Uh, when is the Lions Food Hub open? So we're obviously on recording this now. We're Thursday the 8th of July, so we're actually open for the first time tomorrow at, at the Community Trust. Uh, we've got 17 people coming tomorrow, so 17 different families coming. And yeah, we're open nine till half past two, three o'clock tomorrow. Um, if people do need help, then they need to go onto social media, so like Facebook or Twitter, and basically message us through that. And then you'll be given a time slot because we work on time slots. We don't want queues up the road of people we want people to still have their dignity and we want them to feel like they've got time with us as well we don't want anything to be so rushed lastly who can come to the food hub and who do you get people from far and wide and with different backgrounds so we've had masses of different yeah backgrounds and i would say religions cultures everything like that totally different we've had people come from as far out as catford um, we've had a couple of ladies that come from, I think it's Elephant, but they, they literally said they've been to other places and they've been treated really badly and they, they said we're like a breath of fresh air to them because we're all so happy, because we're volunteers because we want to do this. We're not volunteers just because it's something to do, we, we're passionate and that's obviously my partner Ellen and Kelly, like Essex, all of us are passionate about what we do and that we want to help. We don't just want to help in food. If there's information that we can give people, like with jobs, uh, their council tax, anything, we're going to start getting people down. So I've asked Scott that he will come down from the Proper Blokes Club to help about men's mental health. I'm trying to get uh, citizens advice down to help other people and stuff like that. So we literally want to help as many people as far and wide, and it doesn't matter how far away you live, obviously we are in SC16 and we want to help our community, but that's, I want to spread the love, do you know, like, as much as no one likes us, for us, I want to help as many people as possible. Well, we like you. <laughs> it's a Millwall family. And uh, also, thank you very much. And do you need any volunteers at all to assist? So at the moment we're only open on the Friday, so we are actually okay with volunteers, as much as my partner Ellen might say no, but uh, no, we are alright at the moment. <laughs> but uh, in the future, yeah, if we do, we will put out posts and if people would like to volunteer their time, then yeah, definitely come down. I'd like to say a special thank you to Ellen, because Ellen has literally been there throughout everything I've wanted to do. She's been by my side to support me and I thank her from the bottom of my heart because truly we wouldn't be where we are now if, if she wasn't with me by my side and helping me in every which way we do anything. And also want to thank Kelly Essex for also coming in and volunteering her time. She, nothing's too much for her. She's done everything we've ever asked her to do. She's always been there for us, pick up the phone and she'd be there no matter what. So massive thank you to her as well. Also, I just want to do a little, little couple of thank yous. Well, never little because it's massive what they've done for us, all these people. And that's obviously to Atchung, Millwall, like with Nick, Hart and all the rest of it. They've donated so much money to, to our calls. And obviously yourselves, no one likes us talking, keeping putting out posts for us and everything else. Basically getting more funding in, getting more donations in. So, And everyone that supported us really and truly everyone that has liked a post shared a post donated to banquet or any which way they've helped us truly means the world to us so i want to thank you all completely and utterly from the bottom of my heart i thank you so thanks kelly i'm sure we will talk again in a not too distant future and all the best to you and your team in your new home at the den i will hand you over to eamon well that was nice seeing all of that Lots of people there to say a big well done, Kelly, and getting your uh, food up into the den. While I was there, I did manage to catch up with some of the people who attended the open. What do you reckon about this lion's food up then, Terry? This is Terry Reese, by the way, quite a famous character in his own way. <laughs> Good him out. I think Kelly is the, uh, the one who gets all the praise. She's, I think that girl does like 
you know, if you didn't know, Christmas Day she's out feeding the the old age pensioners, and uh, and then it did surprise me when she started up something like this. She always puts others before her, and there's pleasure to call her and, and have her as a friend, mate. And you typical put, Millwall. And you put the effort in there to help her as well. I know Finally jumping very, in a skip every now and again. Jumping in a skip. <laughs> can't be bad. <laughs> Dean. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just echo what Terry says, really. I mean, she's just, she's unbelievable what she does. No effort, just does it, wants to do it all on her own. You know, you try and, you, you offer to help and she's like, yeah, 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 I'll call you, I'll call you. She don't call you, but yeah, just brilliant. She's just, you know, it's what it's all about. That, that's the meal wall there, the community, the together, you know, people don't see this side of it and it's just brilliant. I think, she, you know, she deserves everything she gets. Wonderful. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you. Harvey? What was that like in the grand opening? I've got Harvey Brown here. He opened the uh, the food hub. It was a good. It was good. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about Kelly? She's amazing. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. I always think she's got too many plates spinning, <laughs> but she is amazing. Isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're Harvey. welcome. And for what you do for the show. <laughs> hey, thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's good like that. He is good like that. I'm speaking to Mrs. Brown. You are. Mother of Harvey. You are. <laughs> Tell me, what do you reckon of this lion's food up? Do you know, it, it's, it is, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. As Kelly explained to me earlier, it's not about people that can't afford. It's not about people that are on their knees. It's just about coming and getting a little bit of extra so that you've got a little bit of extra money for some, you know, to do something else if you've got kids or whatever else. So I just think it is a really lovely idea, Fantastic. just helping the community. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. And then we've got Mrs. Preet here, and she's uh, come along to the opening. Mrs. Preet, tell us about what you think about this food up. I think Kelly and Ellen and all, all the others that have helped, amazing, really amazing. I came down a couple of weeks ago done a little bit of weeding and just helped out a, a tiny bit but to come down tonight and just to see the container and the, the brilliant brilliant just amazing thanks very much ladies well alex russell hello hey man. the man the man how are we the man who is the assistant manager of the lionesses he's here tonight Tell us about what you think about this Lions Food Hut. Oh, it's incredible. Um, Kelly's always doing work for the community, so it's, it's, it's only right that the Lions Food Hub is, is at the Lions Den. Absolutely, and uh, it will get well supported. Absolutely, by each and every one of us yeah. and, and the club. That's it. Thanks, Alex. Pleasure. Great words. My name's Eamon. Tell us who you are. I'm Kelly. Another Essex. Kelly. Another Kelly, Kelly, Essex. Kelly Essex. And and you've had some involvement with all of this as well. Yeah, I just help out. A friend yeah. of Kelly and Ellen's, I help out every Friday at the food bank. That's good. And what do you think about it being here? Love it. Yeah. Love it, yep. Well, well done, Kelly. Keep the good work up, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm here with Sean Daly, Margaret and Barry Mizzen. I'm just going to ask... Margaret, what she thinks about the food hub? I, I'm really impressed. I think it's wonderful and I think it's what the community needs here. So well done to Kelly and Ellen and our team uh, for all they're doing. I just think it's wonderful and I'm just privileged to be here today at the opening. So well done, everybody. Thanks, Margaret. Barry? I think there's a lot of issues, a lot of issues in society at the moment and we're always looking for someone to do something. Uh, and in our lack of wisdom, we think politicians are going to solve it for us and they will not. The change comes from ordinary people, we're ordinary people, Kelly, Ellen, ordinary people making a difference and this is making a big, big difference and obviously great thanks to the Millwall Community Trust for enabling this. Fancy that. <laughs> oh, and we've got the man himself, <laughs> Sean Daly, the CEO of the Millwall Community Trust. Well, what do you reckon, another uh, brick in the wall? Um, I think it's what the community is about really, um, you know, just enhance what we're doing already in the community with the young children. And it's the ideal place, it should be here. It should be, you know, it's a lion's hub, it should be at the den for uh, people to come in and see it and support it. Thanks very much, Sean, and uh, well done for the effort you've put into it. So, there you are. so you, you've come to the... Uh, I've come to the opening of this fantastic food hub container, which yeah. we think is the start of uh, something, something big. It's something secure for the food hub. It's stronger than I thought it would be. <laughs> 
so. So it's Absolutely. good. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. It's very, very good. Look, I mean, uh, Kelly and, and the Lions Food Hub have been doing deep work in the community for a long while. So yeah. it's fantastic, actually, that they don't have to, I think, wait around for councils and other people to kind of do favours for them. They've got something solid now that they can rely on, and that's pretty good. So something to build from, I think. Yeah. That's the hope. Thanks very much. Sure. Cheers. Thank you. Sharon, come and say something about the Lions Food Hub. Say something. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you like. Well, this is absolutely fantastic. I think it's um, it's a privilege for anyone to be involved in it. It's a privilege for anyone to know Kelly and Ellen and the brilliant work they're doing here, and the rest of the you know community involved here. It's just um, it's 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 the right thing to do. Um, you know, we're in Food Education Trust. We believe in free food. Um, there's all sorts of different. I'm also a dietitian. There's all, there's, all, there's all sorts of different models around about food banks and how to feed people. But the bottom line is, is that if people need food, they should have food. It's their right to food. Uh, we also we also support the uh, the right to the right to food campaign, which is part of Ian. I don't even know Ian Byrne. Yes. But, right. So it's with the fan supporting food banks up in Liverpool, Liverpool yeah, and Everton. That's right. So we're, you know, I'm sort of really support that idea that they have that it's, you know, it's it's about free food. It's about everyone should have the right to food, okay. and I think here this is about, you know, food rights and free food, and that everyone should have the right to, you know, shouldn't people shouldn't go hungry? No. You know, it's it's crazy, and what we're saying earlier, what people were saying here earlier on, what Sean Casey was saying is that you know that some of the kids, well, not just kids here, you see it everywhere, kids are hungry, but you know, if kids are hungry, their mothers are hungry, and on the estates that we work in in Bermondsey, then there's, there's pensioners who are hungry, yeah. and they're too proud to say that they're hungry, and they go hungry, and they haven't got the money to pay their fuel either, so they're living in fuel poverty as well as food poverty, and you know, it's so this is great that people come together and tackle it, and I've said too much, and I just you know I just think tonight is um, is Kelly's. It's Kelly's night, and the whole week belongs to Kelly. I just think it's fantastic what she's done, and Ellen. It's brilliant, and Sean Casey, but Kelly. Thank, thank you, Sean. It's, yeah. it's really been a pleasure to uh, listen to you. Yeah. And you're not getting away with it, Ellen. I was just going to point you in that direction. Yeah. Come on, Ellen. So, so you're part and parcel of this lion's food up. This is Ellen. I am. And tell us what your thoughts are about arriving here in the den with a lion's food hub. Oh, I love it. I've worked at Millwall for 14 years, so being at Millwall, it just tops it all, really. And to be able to continue to feed the people that we feed each week is just a, a big bonus. And, of course, you are the pivotal character behind Kelly in oh, making this all happen, <laughs> aren't you? I am. Um, yeah, she works hard. I'm sadly at home quite some time due to my own health, so um, if I can help in any way, and I do. So on a Friday when she goes off to work, I'm the one that's there helping feed everybody. Well done, you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Well, that was fantastic going to the opening of the Food Hub. And Hugh and Sharon from the Food Education Trust very interesting people and and very critical to the move to uh, the Mill Community Trust for the Lions Food Hub. They helped out immensely. Uh, we might catch up with them somewhere down the line in the show when, when things move on from the opening. Or, uh, we catch up with Libby Stubbs and Jeff Burnage, who's talking to her. Let's hear from a good friend of the show, Barry Stradlin. Hello, my name's Barry Stradling. I'm a Millwall fan of my entire life. I'm doing the London Memory Walk uh, to try and raise some money for the Alzheimer's Society. I'm doing this because I've got close friends with Alzheimer's and I've got family relation with Alzheimer's. So if you could help me out by um, going to justgiving.com, fundraising Barry Stradling, and uh, try and raise as much money as possible. If you can donate some money and also share the link to people to try and get everyone involved in this to try and help people suffer from Alzheimer's. That Barry Stradley never stops walking, and uh, what a great cause he's walking for this time, for the Alzheimer's disease. Give him money to go into research and help those that suffer. Well done, Barry. So next, it's Jeff Burnage, who is talking with the captain of the Millwall Lionesses, Libby Stubbs. So, good evening, Libby. 
Good evening. How are you keeping? I'm doing very well, thank you. And yourself? Uh, yeah, everything's fine here. Listen, it's your third year you're going into as captain of the Lionesses. The first two years, neither of the seasons got finished. What are you hoping for for your third season? Yeah, it is indeed. So um, I'm hoping at least to finish the season. That would be a that would be a great start. Um, obviously, like you say, I joined three years ago, and um, with the hopes of playing higher and potentially getting the Lionesses up to where they they should be. So the fact that we've gained promotion this uh, for this season is massive, and I just want to continue growing um, personally and as the, as a team for the rest of the season. Well, um, the other thing, of course, is that um, we've also switched to our home region, having been playing in the eastern region. We're now playing in London and South East, so the travelling should be a lot less, and um, that must be a help to uh, to you and the girls. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we do still have some quite um, far away games, but, you know, being in, in the London region is, uh, yeah, there's a lot more familiar names and... Uh, There'll be some really good fixtures in the upcoming season, so I'm looking forward to it. We've um, we've seen the uh, retained list that the clubs put out, and um, uh, but we haven't, as far as I'm aware, yet seen any news of new signings. Um, how is it looking at training? Are we getting uh, some new signings training regularly this with, with us already? Obviously, I can't say too much, but uh, training's been very good. We're um, progressing well. Um, working well as a team and um, it's looking very exciting for next season. Um, obviously, I can't say too much as, as of yet, but I'm happy um, all the girls managed to stay. We um, There's a few of them that have joined the same time with me, so we, we've we've got quite a close bond and uh, any new players that come in um, can hopefully see that and um, look to build that with us as well. So, like I say, I can't say too much, but it's looking good. Um, last year, your uh, vice captain was uh, Sean Fitzgerald. Is that right? That is. And uh, this year, you've also got another vice captain in Abby Dell, um, who's been with us for a little while and is the centre forward. Uh, how do you think she will contribute now that uh, she's part of the uh, the, uh, the captaincy team? Um, I think Abby's going to fit in perfectly. I mean, she's a vocal player on the pitch and off the pitch. Um, the girls do look up to her. She's mature um, and she's obviously a very good player. So um, to have her with myself and Sean as part of the captain team, um, it's a massive, a massive bonus. And uh, we all got in very well and uh, like to bounce ideas off each other. So, um, again, looking very positive for the new season. When did you actually start pre-season training uh, this time? Um, we came back two weeks ago. Um, we came back into training. Um, it's been intense, um, but yeah, it's been very good. And is there anything in particular that uh, Katie and Alex have been working on, or is it uh, still uh, largely fitness? Um, what do you see, uh, what they're trying to do at the moment in, in your training sessions? I mean, pre-season is pre-season, so it's always going to be a lot of fitness, um, a lot of running making sure we're prepared for the season ahead because it is going to be a tough one for us all. Um, there's a few tactical things that we'd like to work on, um, positioning and um, in our formation. Um, but yeah, like I say, pre-season, so it's mainly a lot of running um, and a lot of fitness. Well, I know that some of our opposition uh, teams will listen to this, so you don't want to say too much, but um, are you working on a new formation or are you working on having the option to change formations um, when you want to during the forthcoming season? Um, at the moment, we're sticking to how we have been. Um, we're looking to build on what we had last season. So um, we're just focusing on drilling down our positions and knowing uh, where to be in and out of possession. Um, but yeah, again, like I said, I can't say too much, but... Um, we are we are working hard on it and uh, looking to focus for the for the pre-season fixtures and obviously um, the new season ahead. One thing that will be different um, is that we'll have the Millwall fans back in for home games. Well, and away games come to that, but uh, 
So um, um, when we were last regularly playing in front of crowds, we had some really sizable crowds of Millwall fans, and that added a great deal to the atmosphere. Um, no doubt you've got a comment about that. What were they like when you were playing in front of them? I'll tell you what, I miss playing in front of the fans so much. I mean, it it adds a, another aspect to your game that you really don't realise until you get to do it. Um, I mean, for any of the younger players, it's an excellent experience for them to see um, just how much the fans do push you. And it just gives you that little bit more in the 80th minute and the 90th minute trying to get back and defend for the fans or try and get that goal. Um, it, it's just, it's like having a 12th man on the pitch. So, yeah, I am, I've been missing having the fans in. I'm very looking forward to um, playing in front of them again. Um, and um, uh, are there any particular fixtures in the league programme that you personally are looking forward to? Um, I mean, we have got, obviously, Dulwich Hamlet is a big, is a big name that's going to be in our league. So... For me personally, that's that's a big one that I'm looking forward to um, that will test us and, and me in, as an individual. So um, that's the main one that I'm looking forward to. But obviously, they're all um, going to be testing. It is a step higher. Um, but it'll be good to see where we're at and um, hopefully push everyone to be the best that we can. Right. Um, well, thanks for that, Libby. We'll all be... Uh, we'll all be uh, f- following your progress and hopefully uh, fairly shortly now we'll have a um, the next season's fixture program and that will be on the um, on the club's website um, and uh, thanks again and good luck to all of you for the next coming season. Thank you very much. So a big step up for the Lionesses. It's going to be interesting times. Since uh, that was recorded, Lionesses played last weekend against Ashford Ladies. And it was two all as they went into half time. But Ashford ladies managed to put two further goals uh, past the Lionesses and it ended 4 2. It was an away fixture. Up next is a game at Salt Dean where they go on the 25th of this month. So that'll be another interesting pre season fixture. But Libby said in an after view of the game last weekend is that there is things to learn from what happened and they'll look forward to putting that right in their training and looking forward to the next match. So that was the Lionesses. Next up we'll have the Millwall Romans but before that we'll listen to Patricia Maslin. Remember Carl Bates crashing off his chair at Carrow Rose? and the commentaries that he and Max McLennan gave throughout the pandemic. Well, iFollow gives you all that and the inside track on our club, with a range of benefits including live match video streams if you live outside the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland. Live audio commentary and exclusive club content is available everywhere. Sign up today to get closer to the action. And don't forget, at least 80% of iFollow net revenue goes straight to our club. It's a great way to show your support. A basic package is free and the audio pass starts from 4 49 a month. Go to Millwall's website and select iFollow to subscribe. Well, yeah, go to iFollow, subscribe, listen to Carl Bates and... Max McClellan, uh, another group who's under the banner of the Millwall Community Trust, is Millwall Romans. And I had the pleasure of catching up with them post their National Cup final, which took place last weekend. Well, I'm delighted to have Paul Lodin, Andy Dolan and Jay Lemonius from the Millwall Romans with us tonight. A bit of a reflection on the season past and where things are going in future. It's been a good time for the Romans. They've done exceedingly well. Paul, how would you summarise your football COVID experience? Um, Yeah, it's been it's been a very uh, a very very strange season. This season seems to have gone on for forever. Um, We've obviously had massive breaks in the middle. Um, We've just finished our our season, um, and we're pretty much now going into. 
uh, pre-season for the next one. Uh, but it's um, yeah, it's, 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 it has been a challenge. Uh, we've we, we obviously keeping keeping yourself fit, having the breaks in the season. Um, but we've managed to keep it all together as a club. We, we're quite active on our WhatsApp group. Um, we've we've carried out um, Zoom quizzes all the way through, um, just to sort of keep everybody everybody engaged and everyone active. Um, and that's that's a lot to do with you know while, while we exist as a club as a football club is is the social social side of it as well. But um, I'm glad we've we've kind of get into the get into the end stages now. That's wonderful, Jay. Was it anything different for you? I think similarly, it's, it's uh, it was a challenge as a club overall, uh, but I think individually as as well, it's been a bit a bit a bit tricky. I think twofold. I think as Paul mentioned, uh, we're quite a unique club in the sense that we're we're all quite close, uh, we're good friends, and in a typical season, we'll probably have a social like once every week at least, um, and we're quite we're quite pally. We're, we're, we we kind of feel like that's a really really strong part of our club is the fact that we're so close and we're all good mates. So. Uh, not kind of having the ability to see each other has been difficult, but also I guess all the benefits that that come along with us sort of rallying around sort of the game and rallying around football and sort of keeping fit and stuff, obviously. And 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 don't forget kind of a lot of the positive things that it does for your mental health. So yeah, I I, I realised personally very quickly anyway, um, sort of going through uh, sort of lockdown and stuff. Uh, not have it was difficult anyway, but not have being able to kind of play football or, or even just go to the gym um, just made it like that even more tougher. So yeah, when we were able to get back, it was you could see that how much it meant to everybody who was part of the club to to kind of see each other, see each other again, but also most importantly as well, just sort of get back to playing football. So yeah, it, it was a challenge, but so happy we were able to get back and, and finish the season in the end. Yeah, it's it's that coming together that. Has been a key to many successes I've seen at, at Millwall. Andy, uh, how about it for you? Yeah, I would uh, echo what Jay said there. I think um, the social interaction made such a big difference during that that year. I think we all went through, you know, there's like various phases of opening up and closing up in terms of the restrictions, and there was. A couple of times where you you know you you were we couldn't go to the gym but you could go and do organized sport and i felt very blessed to be able to go and yeah turn up a really well organized uh, um training session and be able to see my mates and um you know you sort of walk wistfully past the pub and wish you could go for a pint after but it's it wasn't open yet um particularly for me i i um my work, you know, I was working from home, doing a lot of uh, Zoom calls, like yeah. a lot of people, and working with people uh, that were scattered all over Europe. So, really felt the difference because some people were under really heavy lockdowns. Like um, one of my colleagues in Paris, you know, you weren't even allowed out of the house for a bit no. uh, there without, a, you know, without like a pass. Um, so I just felt very blessed that we had um, that kind of. Uh, like a kind of a, a release of a lot of the pressure to be able to go out and have a run and chat with people. Yeah, yeah. So the season was different, no doubt about that. Uh, but the season finished and uh, you were champions before you were crowned champions. Uh, tell us how you completed it. How was it for you as, as player manager, Paul? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's been it's been a great season. We, we're so lucky to have have the facilities that we do, and and playing at, at St Paul's, which is a, a really lovely four G pitch, quite a big pitch. Um, Jay's more of the that does the coaching side of things, and and we, we you know we it just allows us now to to play a different style of football. You know, we're always setting up from the back, um, which is it. it, it it's just a, it's it's a much more pleasurable way of playing rather than just trying to hoof it forward, hoof it down the line. Yeah. It, it's just it it just feels it feels such a nicer way to play, and and we've scored some terrific goals this season that, that have come from the back. Uh, you know, three or four touches, it, it's down the wing, and and the ball's going in the box, and we've scored. And um, it, it it you know it's just such a delight to play like that. Yeah, that seems to be more and more commonplace. People will have seen it. Um, very much within the, uh, the 
the European Championships, although mm. many complained that there was too much crab football going to and fro across the pitch. But um, no, it was good. And 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 I've seen it uh, with Millwall themselves. They go about their job playing that way. So, mm. Jay, you must have quite some uh, commitment to ensuring that, that that's the way that players developed and uh, how do you find people getting on with it? Yeah, I think um, I think it's been positive overall. Like um, we've been very, very lucky. So in the sense that we 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 won the league last year. So I think we had the confidence and and the foundation to kind of build upon. Uh, yeah. So we weren't necessarily starting from ground zero. But as Paul mentioned, we had a great opportunity, sort of moving over with the partnership with Millwall and a great opportunity in terms of the pitch that we've got and the facilities um, to be able to kind of, yeah, I guess, create a brand of football that is fitting of us as a club and um, means that we could put out a, a, a positive products in the pitch. So um, everybody embraced it incredibly, uh, incredibly well. Um, and, and I can't be sort of prouder, proud of the guys for, yeah, I guess, sort of, successfully winning the league as as, as 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 you sort of mentioned but it's the it's the way in which we've done it uh, which has been the most impressive and, and yes yeah, by playing uh playing our brand of football and how we kind of want to play moving forward and we're like Paul said I think we've got some terrific goals but we know we can get better and this is only our first full season sort of playing on that pitch and uh we will get better um but the guys uh, everybody who's, who's been part of sort of the squads this year has been has been absolutely terrific in terms of being able to um adjust and um and grow and be be open to kind of not just improving as a club but improving as individuals as well and um we're seeing that sort of not just on match days but in training as well and having that kind of regular training is is a massive help for, for us as a club to be able to kind of implement that that's fantastic andy you're going to have the second team uh under your reins, and do you think that this is the the way that your plan is going to be easily adopted by the second side? Uh, yeah, I think um, you know the benefit of having the pitch and the training sessions will help with that. It'll be a challenge for sure because some of the people will be, uh, take, you know, like welcoming into the club might not as be as experienced footballers as um as, as some of the guys in the first team, but um. The sort of the advantage of that style of football and why you see it being played right through to the top of, of the game is that it's simple and effective. So, um, so you know, it's also fun. So yeah, I think uh, we'll be aiming to kind of keep the ethos of the club um, throughout the two teams, and hopefully over time we'll have people getting sort of you know progressing from the second team into the first on. And also, you know, the other way around, uh, you'll have to ask Paul and Jay about this, but I finished the season on the bench, so... Uh, oh, right. so second in, you know? Well, <laughs> you might have finished it on the bench, but you were uh, a key player throughout. I know that. So, <laughs> well done, well done. <laughs> anyway, completing um, the season didn't quite complete until last Saturday when you faced Village Manchester in the Cup Final in Birmingham. Andy, because you was on the bench, tell us how that <laughs> turned out. Well, you know, mate, um, I was on the bench, but I have to say, uh, watching it was enough of an adrenaline rush for me, to be honest. It was a, it was a tight, tense game, and uh, they, were, they were definitely the best team we've played this season. They, um, they tried to play a similar way to us retain the ball, move the ball quickly. Uh, they were strong and physical and um, yeah, it was a tough game. Like you've seen it sort of ebbed back and forth and um, yeah, they, they, you know, they, they only managed to just like scramble back with, uh, I, wouldn't even, I don't think the goal was even last minute. It was almost the last second when they equalised. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, it was, it, it was a great game to watch. Um, looked like an intense game to play and I had uh, I had 10 minutes at the end there and it was, it was a hot day and um, yeah, a couple of the guys up front, they just never stopped moving. So um, yeah, well done to all the guys who played in that game. So it was a, it was a draw at full time. 
What happened next, Paul? <laughs> well, I just want to say I didn't take a penalty. I don't like to put any blames, but uh, I'm sure you'll speak to I'm sure you'll speak to Jay after this, and he can describe his penalty. Um, do you know what? When, when you get to that to that stage, exactly what happened to on Sunday night. You know, I, I, I we came off the pitch and we, we'd done ourselves proud. They, they are like Andy was saying. They were a really good team. They they packed out their midfield. And, and I've been going backwards and forwards in my head about over the last few days about what we could have done differently and 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 how we could have you know tactically done something different. But they they were they were a really good team, and I think for for us maybe on another day we we would have we would have got it right. Yeah. Um, but we you know we did hold them we held, held them till till the till the end and penalty wise I never ever blame a, a, a player for, for stepping up and taking a penalty I always come off and say who, who wants to take one you know who's confident enough to take one um, and whoever puts their hand up you know enough respect I, I, I don't think I've got the, the the courage to take it after missing on many occasions in my previous career <laughs> um, and and it's just I think with penalties it's just one of those things it can go your way or it, or it, or it doesn't go your way Um <laughs> And uh, yeah, and I, I don't, as I say, I don't, I don't, I don't force any any blame on anybody for for that. It was just one of them things. Yeah, and just went that way. So Jay, give us a, a running commentary on the <laughs> the penalty exercise that took place. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, even just talking about it now is kind of triggering me to be honest. <laughs> I've had a weekend full of uh, traumatic penalties, so um, yeah, it, it does feel a bit blurry, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's just um, yeah. What we tried to do was just, I guess, kind of pick the most pick who 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 were our penalty takers who felt most confident. Um, and to be fair, I think we we sort of ended up with seven sort of mm. guys who were who were quite confident yeah. in, in taking a penalty. So I think it was just kind of down to um, yeah, down to sort of uh, I guess a bit of luck and a bit of execution. Um, and sadly, yeah, um, they sort of. Uh, they executed and, and and they sort of yeah struck theirs a lot better than ours. But yeah, I, I think we can, we can we can still be proud of the guys for, for how they how we played and even just getting to that point. Um, it was a long old long old um, cups log to be honest. We've had away ties in sort of Glasgow, Scotland, um, and we've been incredibly successful. So uh, even just turning up and being able to kind of yeah um, put forth a spectacle like that was was great and. Yeah, sadly on the day you can't miss three good penalties and expect to win, as, as England found out. Um, Shared so, yeah. experience. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 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 I know how. Definitely know how some of those players are feeling. <laughs> okay. But hey, it's uh, you've done a great job. You got to where you got. You achieved a lot along the way, as you just said. And uh, yeah, you should all be proud of what you achieved. And of course, you'll come out of this again. And it'll all happen all over again next season. So I look forward to uh, being able to get to the the final next season. We'll see. Anyhow, it'll be interesting (laughs) times. So team accolades, season awards, who has shown remarkable responses. Paul, I'm going to put this to you. And I know the leading goal scorer's name already. Well, I think he was a leading goal scorer from about the second game in and he never lost it. (laughs) So, uh, well done, Jay. Tell us, what are the the accolades and season awards, Paul? So, we've got got our end-of-season social um, in mid-August, I think. I think it was. Um, So, nothing's been been announced as yet, but we're going to do... Um, we, we will be doing a, a. We always do a players' player award where we collect we collect the votes from the players. Right. Um, there'll be a managers' player, and to be fair, it's going to be a it's going to be a tough one this season. There've been some really really good performances this year. Excellent. From across from from across the board. So um, I don't know if we'll bother with a top goal scorer this year. No, no. Uh, pointless <laughs> award. Um, yeah, same <laughs> bloke every year, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's trophy cabinets too. Uh, he's got two full up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so so we haven't we haven't we haven't we haven't done the awards yet, and uh, I I can't reveal uh, who I'm who I'm, uh, I'm I'm aiming it towards as yet. Well, I'm sure you'll share that with us when the season returns on the weekly show. So that sounds good, and and that's something well worth looking forward to. And you'll all get yourselves together for that. When will you return for season twenty one, twenty two? Yeah, I mean. Um, 
uh, to be honest, I, I can't really see us having much of a break. We've got we've got teams that are, are screaming for us to to get a friendly. Um, I've I've just had a quick chat with the with the league. They're keen to to start the season when we normally do, which will be um, probably the first week in September. Right. So it only really gives us about five to six weeks to um, to prepare. Yeah. So, I think probably this weekend will be will be a rest, and then the following weekend we'll be we'll be straight back on um, and organising friendly. So, I should imagine all the way through August there'll be a friendly every weekend, and right. then the league will start in the September. Um, yeah. We're looking to enter the GFSN Cup again, which the draw will come out at some point, which could be uh, anywhere across the UK. Um, we do have a, a tournament to go to in Blackpool in ten days' time. Uh, which is a, a seven-a-side tournament. It's with the GFSN. They there's Excellent. clubs from all over uh, all over the UK that are going. I think there's 36 wow. teams that have entered onto a, onto a six-a-side or seven-a-side competition. Um, and we're obviously entering. Um, I think two or three teams that will be going up on the, on the Friday. So we'll be doing that. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I think it's I think it's the way because we finished so late. It's just the case of of almost. Not having a break and going straight into it again. That's great. That's absolutely great. So Blackpool, it is. Uh, we've got to go there this year because they uh, managed to get themselves promoted as well. Indeed, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So that'll be an interesting game. And new members, and uh, look, Andy, I'm going to say, you know, with a second team and, and numbers of interested people joining, and 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 I know some of them are, are Millwall fans as well. Are you still recruiting new members, and when don't you stop recruiting new members? What's what's the plan? Uh, yeah, we're very keen to get new members in. If anybody listening is interested to get down, because um, we're gonna, yeah, you know, we're gonna need to get a full squad out for a second team. Um, the idea as well with the second team is, um, you know, to to try and provide a space where some of the guys who are maybe a little bit like uh, less competitive and less intense in their training can come and sort of enjoy the 11 aside. So we'll probably have a, a deeper bench because um, a few of them like myself might be happy enough with 20 minutes running around instead of 90. It's a bit tiring <laughs> these days for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we need plenty of members and, uh, We've we've not run into the issue of when we stop recruiting yet. Um, like that that would be a nice problem to have. I think um, you know we've always got the like the Wednesday night open training um, to to try try and welcome plenty of new people and there'll be space there. So um, the more the merrier is the message at the moment. And of course, the Wednesday night training is at St Paul's at Rother Ive, so. Get along there uh, if you want to have a play for the Millwall Romans and see how you enjoy the setup. Jay, yeah. any any tips for um, potential new members? No, no tips to be honest. I guess like for us as a club, it's it's so important why we exist, and we've uh, we've gone through. I think we've always been quite a popular popular side actually sort of within our league and and we do kind of get quite a lot of players from our league who who've even sort of a makeup of our club now a lot of the players are some players who've sort of come from other clubs and I think that's because we pride ourselves on on having the right ethos um we understand that we exist for a particular reason um so anybody who comes down I think it's just important that they they share our values our ethos uh understand that it's an inclusive space and um, ultimately, yeah, is, uh, it doesn't matter whether you're you're, you're David Beckham or, or or you've never kicked a ball before in your life. Um, the important thing for us is that, yeah, you you, you kind of share our values, share our ethos, and um, if anybody does that, then then they're always uh, welcome and part of uh, our football family, anyway. Very much so, and I suppose we've got to mention um, Ambassador Loading, uh, <laughs> who's who's now got this role. <laughs> with the Mill Community Trust. And, of course, any potential members, you've got an ambassador in your team with the trust. So that's that's always a bit of a bonus as well. <laughs> so how did that come about then, Paul? Um, yeah, that, it, it was a bit out of the blue, to be honest. Um, I, 
I've been working with, uh, I, I've got to mention him again, uh, Sean Daly from, from the Community Trust, who is just an outstanding person. He, the, the work that he does for the Trust and, and, and what he's done for us has is, just been incredible. And we speak quite regularly and I've got to know him over the last year. And uh, he, he sort of approached me and said, do you, do, you want to, do you want to come and do it? And I said, yeah, absolutely. Um, I spoke to, uh, to, to Kelly from, from the Lionesses, who was also yeah. an ambassador for the, for the Trust, and she said it's one of the best things she's ever done. And, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I say I absolutely jumped at the chance to, to, to do it. And I, not knowing too much about Millwall before, uh, be, before we joined them, uh, joined the partnership, um, they're just such an impressive club. And uh, as I say, I can't speak highly enough of him. Sean is, is, is incredible to to get everything involved, everybody involved with football, which is just so important, especially in a, a echo what Jay has just said, in, in, in an LGBT community there, you, football is, is, is so big and, and it's, and you, you, you know, you turn up and if it's not, if you're not in that safe space and, that, and that's why we exist because we provide that, that safe space for players. And, and I'm really proud to say that we have recruited um, a lot of players that, that uh, uh, wouldn't have felt comfortable playing in uh, straight teams as such, you know, that we we provide that that, that facility for them. Um, and, that, and that is really why we exist. It's great that you're part of the Millwall family and I've heard that echoed by many people across many sort of areas of the club. So it is really excellent that you are doing what you're doing but lastly what i'll say to you guys is well we look forward again to hear from you and we hope um tom <laughs> baker is back and doing the interviews for us uh, next season we, we've missed him how is his injury um he i think he it, it's not going as well as he expected uh -huh. um it seems to have, have been a bit of an issue that wasn't diagnosed and uh it's not not going as well as he anticipated, but um, he does have a he's got a play out at the moment that we're all going to see on Thursday night. Lovely. Uh, that we're going to we're going down there to support him, and uh, and hopefully he will be back. He probably needs to get fit again, but hopefully back by September October time. All I've got to say, lads, is thanks for um, entertaining us this last season. Paul, we'll have to sort out your communications because you make some strange noises when I'm talking or anybody else is talking, actually. But there you go. We'll have that sorted for next season. Well, that was the Millwall Romans. And what a season they've had. Top of their league all the way through. Never lost a game. They were champions before the season ended. Just a bit unlucky that it didn't work out in the National Cup final. But thanks to Jay, thanks to Andy, and thanks to Paul. And also a big thanks goes out to Libby Stubbs, the captain of the Millwall Lionesses, uh, for talking to our man, Jeff Burnage, and also to Kelly Webster, who invited us to the opening of the Lions Food Hub, and whom Debbie Julians spoke with. And a big thank you to that man at the moment, Harvey Brown, for introducing them. Well, that's all for us now. You'll be able to listen to the new No One Likes Us Talking monthly podcast next week as it returns. And also the weekly Our Millwall Fan Show. That comes online again on Friday the 30th of July. So listen out for them and I hope you've enjoyed the show.